Welcome to Map Analysis for Hedgehogs. Let's talk about viruses and I mean specifically the malware type virus, the malware that self-replicates by infecting other files on the system. But let's take a look at a simple virus. So a simple virus has the so-called virus body. That's the main code of the virus that does the um, infection searches for files that it wants to infect and then there are also encrypted viruses so at some point uh, virus writers um, discovered that it makes sense to encrypt them so antiviruses antivirus products have a harder time to detect them so but still there needs to be some code that decrypts the encrypted virus body which is the so-called decrypted code it's uh, a bit smaller usually um, so, the AV, um, the antivirus, will usually put a pattern on the virus body if it's not encrypted, right? Uh, but the encrypted virus, the antivirus product can still use a pattern but put that on the decryptor. We take as a given that the decryptor is long enough and unique enough, so they would usually be able to find some kind of pattern for the decryptor in the in that case, and they can also detect this kind of virus. And they would have to change the decryptor to um, make it undetected again. So that's why at some point um, virus writers made their decryptors polygomorphic, uh, which means they had several decryptors in the virus body. So if the virus creates a new generation of itself so if it replicates it would choose one of uh, n decryptors to apply and uh, so there are several of them there could be three but there could also be a few hundreds uh, but it's not so much um, that but some of them might also just modify simple portions of the decryptor so it's just slightly different that's also possible, but in any case, the number of decryptors that's possible is not that high. Um, antiviruses could still use N signature patterns to detect all of them. It's tedious, but it's possible. And uh, some antiviruses started at this point to um, apply dynamic decryption, um, meaning they would, for instance, emulate the code to get the decrypted portion of the virus. So, uh, the next um, more advanced stage is the polymorphic virus. And with the polymorphic virus, you also have an encrypted virus body, uh, but the decryptor, the possibilities for the decryptor are so high, you cannot apply uh, pattern signatures anymore. So, it would be millions of possible decryptors. And they achieve this by modifying the decryptor. Some viruses would actually look uh, for compilers on the on the system they infect and then uh, have the source code carrying in the virus body and then change the source code then recompile the source code for the decryptor so it looks very different every time they create a new generation. So in this case no pattern detection is possible but they can apply dynamic decryption like by, by emulation, for instance. Um, yeah, and metamorphic viruses are an entirely different breed, so to speak. In any case, with oligomorphic or polymorphic viruses, the decrypted virus body just looks the same. In this case, uh, visualized by a rectangle with some dots in it. So it's always the same decrypted virus body. The metamorphic virus changes its own body shape all the time, so every time it uh, creates a new generation. And uh, so we have different shapes for this. And uh, it achieves that by changing the execution flow, by adding junk instructions and so on. So there are different possibility possibilities to do that. And, um, yeah, you cannot apply the pattern detection here. The only thing you can do is uh, use algorithmic detections and heuristic detections. So it's quite hard to detect them, but it's also very hard to write those kind of viruses. If you want to know more about this topic, I suggest you read the book 
um, the art of computer virus research and defense by Peter by Peter Zor. It's pretty old, but it's still um, valid up to this day. And um, also the contents of this video are based on the theoretical stuff in the book. So um, read it and um, well, have fun. See you next time.